Whenever you're texturing something using real-world photos, you want them to be seamless. This means that the image tiles, in other words, it's repeatable, and this makes texturing much easier. However, if you go outside and try to capture some images, they will not be tileable, and in some cases it can get really bad. So fixing this is going to require two steps. First of all, you need to equalize the image so there's no changes in lighting, and then you need to remove the visible seams using clone stamping or some other method. And all of this can be done in Blender using a lot of nodes, and I know a lot of people don't mess around with nodes that much, so I'll make sure to explain what each step is doing. So let's hop into Blender and get started. Start off by going into the compositing window and enabling auto render and use nodes. We can then get rid of the render layers node because we're not going to use it. And then we're going to add in the image that we want to make seamless with shift A. And if we control shift click this node, it's fed into the viewer so we can see what's going on. And you can zoom in and out using V and Alt V. And just to show you what this currently looks like when it tiles, I'm going to add a translate node with X and Y values set to half the resolution of the image. So in this case the grass texture was 2000 by 1383, so just divide by 2 in the input fields and set wrap to both axes. And here what we've basically done is moved our seams to the middle of the image, and this is nowhere near tileable. So we need to start off by getting rid of the vignetting and other lighting changes. To equalize this image I'm going to make two branches in our node setup. This first one is going to find the average color of the texture, and to do that I'm going to add three levels nodes and set one to red, one to green, and one to blue. And each one of these is computing the average amount of red, green, or blue in the image. And using the mean output, which is the average value, we can combine these using a combine RGB node, which then gives us our average color overall. And of course this is going to end up just being a shade of green, which makes sense because our source image was green grass. Now in our second branch we want to make what is essentially a high pass filter, and you can think of this as just a way to ignore lighting change. Changes. So we're only letting the high frequencies pass like small sharp details and everything else gets blocked out. So start off this branch by adding an invert node which is going to invert the color of our image giving us this white and purple pattern and then just add a mix node with a factor of 0.5 using our source image and the inverted image. And when we hook this up to the viewer you see that we just get gray. And this is because we're evenly mixing an image with its inverse which perfectly cancel each other out leaving just gray. But now if we add a blur to our inverse with some non-zero value on the x and y, you see that some details pass through. And by changing our blur value, we get to choose how much detail passes through. And basically what's happening here is that an image only differs from its blurred out version whenever you have very sharp details. So these are the only ones that don't get cancelled out to gray. And now I'm just going to invert this and convert it to a black and white image, which I'll explain why I do this in a second. Now we're going to use both our branches in a mix node. So after you add one, put the source texture in the background and our average color in the foreground with a factor of our high pass. And this is what equalizes our image. So because we inverted our high pass, what's happening here is the average color is being mixed in only when there's no sharp detail. So the low frequencies, aka the shadows and the vignette, are covered by our average color. And this gives the whole image a kind of washed out look, which is exactly what we want. And if we want to control the strength of this equalization, we can add a math node to our high pass and set it to multiply, where zero means no delay and one means maximum delighting. And again we're going to add in a translate node with wrap set to both and offset the image by half the resolution on the x and y axes. And as we saw before this moves the seams to the middle of the image and you can still see them but we're much closer to a seamless tileable texture. Finally hook this up to the composite node and set your render settings to match the resolution of the source image and then just hit F12 to render and then save out the equalized texture. So at this point we removed most of the lighting in this photo which makes it much closer to being tileable, but we still need to paint out these seams. So back in the layout window I'm going to delete everything and then add in a plane. And then by opening up the properties with N we can make this plane the same aspect ratio as our texture. So 2000 by 1383 becomes 2 by 1.383. And then in the shading window I'm going to open up this plane's material and get rid of everything except for the output node. And then add in an image texture and choose our equalized image and then just hook that up to the surface slot. And again this is the current state of our texture and now we need to paint out the seams. So then back in the layout window I'm going to change to texture paint mode and open up our paint settings and in the toolbar choose the clone brush and make that maximum strength. And just so we can see what we're doing I'm going to hide the x and y axes and also the floor. And since we're basically going to be painting across lines I'm going to change our stroke mode to line. And now we can just paint out the seams by control clicking to sample the texture and then all we need to do is drag a line across the seam. And that does exactly what we 
we want, and we can still blend this in a bit more by changing our stroke back to space, and then we just sample and paint over some other areas. And our goal is to make this look as natural as possible, so just play around with this until everything looks right and the seams are gone. And when this texture is ready, we can open up the image editor and change it to our equalized image, which of course is now edited, and then just save out this image. And at this point, we can actually check how well this now tiles. So in the shading window, hit Control T on the image texture node, and this automatically adds a texture coordinates and a mapping node. I'm gonna set the scale to 2x2 on the X and Y to get 4 tiles total on the plane. And the reason this isn't updating is because we're still in texture paint mode, so just change back to object mode. And this result is actually pretty good, especially considering what the original image looked like tiled. So ideally, you want to start off with a better image, but even something like this can be equalized and made seamless fairly well. And again, if you want this to look less washed out, you can always add in a brightness and contrast node and play around with those values to get different looks. But this is the general technique, and I know it was a lot of nodes, but hopefully I did a good job explaining what they do. So that's all I got for you guys, but hopefully you enjoyed it, and I'll see you on the next one.